my channel mammals. We're already on next on the next Bible lesson called Mind with a capital M. And um, I'm going to read the first and second sections. <laughs> I'm going to tell you also that in my heart, what I'd like to do is do the first and second sections today and maybe tomorrow do the second and thir third and fourth sections and then the fifth and sixth on three different days. I know I don't usually put you through that much. I just hope you're loving it like I am, but you have the option to turn it off. <laughs> but this lesson is really powerful. I couldn't think where to stop. So maybe I won't do that, but maybe I will. Okay, let's start with one and two. The subject is mind. And in the Bible, in Psalms, it says, Many, O Lord my God, are the wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more in, than can be numbered. That's outrageous. God's thoughts for us more than can be numbered. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Genesis. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. <laughs> And he took of the stones of that place, can you imagine, and put them for his pillow, <laughs> his pillows, and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending upon it. And behold, stood above it and said, I am the Lord. I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of to thee. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep, and he said, oh, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Oh, Jeremiah, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And then in Science and Health, Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. She says, God creates all forms of reality. His thoughts are spiritual realities. God made all that was made and mind signifies God. Infinity, not infinity. Infinite mind is the creator and creation of the infinite image or idea emanating from this mind. If mind within and without all things, then all is mind. And this definition is scientific. It means it's provable, trust, trusting, and forever. That's what true science has to be. God can inform the infinite mind of anything he does and um, not already, wait, Let's start that back again. <laughs> can, can we inform the infinite mind of anything he does not already comprehend? Do we expect to change perfection? Shall we plead for more at the open font, which is pouring forth more than we accept? The unspoken desire does bring us nearer the source of all existence and blessedness.
spiritual ideas lead up to their divine origin, God, and to the spiritual sense of being. Angels are pure thoughts from God, winged with truth and love, no matter what their individualism may be. In other words, however we describe angels, their spiritual ideas, communicating God. By giving earnest heed to these spiritual guides, they tarry with us, and we entertain angels unawares. Through divine science, spirit, God unites understanding to eternal harmony. The calm and exalted thought or spiritual apprehension is at peace. Section 2 in the Bible from Psalms, it says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. <laughs> thou comprehendest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Oops. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. I, I cannot attain unto it. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than, can, than the sand. Imagine that. Those thoughts are coming at us every second, aren't they? More in number than the sand. And then in Science and Health, Mary Baker Eddy says, infinite mind creates and governs all from the mental molecule to infinity. The one ego, the one mind or spirit called God is infinite individuality which supplies all form and comeliness and which reflects reality and divinity in individual spiritual man and things. The mind supposed to exist in matter or um, beneath a skull bone <laughs> is a myth, a misconceived sense and false conception as to man and mind. When we put off the false sense for the true and see that sin and mortality have neither principle nor permanency, we shall learn that sin and mortality are without actual origin or rightful existence. Immortal ideas, pure, perfect, and enduring, are transmitted by the divine mind through divine science, which corrects error with truth and demands spiritual thoughts, divine concepts, to the end that they may produce harmonious results. Hold thoughts steadfastly to the enduring, the good, and the true. And you will bring these into your experience proportionately to their occupancy of your thoughts. Oh, may I just read that one last sentence again? It's one of my favorites. Hold thought steadfastly to the enduring, the good, and the true. And you will bring these into your experience proportionably to their occupancy of your thoughts. It's all up to us. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. Maybe I'll read the rest. We'll see. So long.